Welcome back to the lab, folks. All right, uh, the reason for this video is that Vivor sent me a meter. They sent it in for a review. It's the EM4370 True RMS Clamp Multimeter. There it is, comes in a nice pouch. Tough tools, half the price. If you're not familiar with Vivor, um, they're uh, an online uh, tool company. They have their own brands, and, and I think they might sell other brands too. I'm not too sure. But I've bought from them before. I bought an ultrasonic cleaner and a small little compressor. Uh, you know, the kind for use for airbrush, but I use it for something else. Everything that I ordered from them was shipped very quickly. And I'm here in Canada, so I, unless they're spending a fortune on shipping, they must have inventory right here in North America. Because everything I got has come within a couple of days. So, and shipping is always free. What's it come with? It comes with the meter. It comes with a thermocouple. Comes with some leads. Leads don't feel too bad. Do they have any rating information on them? They do. Okay, the 22 gauge. They got a PVC coating on them and they're supposed to be good for 1000 volts AC and 1200 volts DC. They feel by typical. They feel typical. They're not silicone by any means, but they're not uh, they're not awful. Um comes with a nice manual here, it's fairly thick. I guess it's several languages. Oh yeah. And it comes with some batteries. These are just your typical carbon zinc batteries. So let's uh, let's put them in. And in the process, uh, we're going to we're going to take it apart and have a look at it. This is the battery box. It's got a nice brass insert. That's that's good. Now let's see what else is inside it. Okay. We've got leads coming from the battery box to the board. This little split ring connectors here. It looks like there's a, a, a decent amount of spacing, but they do have the input resistor here is uh, is ganged. So they put a lot of them in series there, which uh, gives a pretty good voltage. But it looks like it's fairly well laid out. It's a gold plated board. It seems to be fairly well put together. Like there's no big blobs of junk on it. There's, not too much hand soldering. It looks like a couple of little pieces were hand soldered in. Just this and this, as far as I can see. Oh, and this over here. Well, anyway, let's put it back together, put the batteries in it, and power it up. It's very easily operated with a thumb of the right hand or with the fingers of the left hand. No problem there. And the clamp is uh, fairly robust. It's got hold, select. So I guess if you go in here, you can select whether or not, to, yeah, so you can select the different functions that are available there. Uh, same here. Select AC or DC in the amp ranges. Temperature, it has a built-in thermocouple as well, which is nice. So you can look at the ambient temperature. It's got a max-min mode. Very nice. Okay, so I've got this single outlet extension here. Let's see if this uh, NCV mode works. It seems to, uh, seems to be very effective at telling if there's voltage there or not. Let me shut the switch off here. Yeah, it's, it's working pretty good. Nice and sensitive. We got it in resistance mode here, so let's uh, start off with that. I'm gonna take these uh, sleeves off here to expose more of the tip. It's nice that they come with that. Let's try 100 ohms. I'm not gonna try all of them, I just wanna see how it's accurate. Let's try 10K here. All right. It's accurate, and I would expect that. There aren't too many meters built these days that are not accurate. So it does have the accuracy. So let's uh, let's look at the uh, continuity mode. It's immediate and it's latched. 
Very nice. And we'll try the diode mode. Here we go. And so, Shaki diode, 2.56, right on, yeah. Red LED, green LED. So it's in the ballpark, it lights up all the LEDs. It's doing the job it needs to do. All right, so we see about capacitance. Okay, 540, yeah, there we go. 20 nanofarad. It's going to take a while. Yeah. Yeah, it's accurate. It does the job. Now, let me get out uh, another meter here so we can compare it with it on voltage. And I'm just going to power up my power supply here. Okay, before I hook that up, I just want to check to see the standard spacing here. And it is. That's very nice to see. Now, let's set this up. We're going to put it at. Uh, Let's try, we're going to try somewhere around 5 millivolts. It's saying 5.1 and 5.2. But these two agree. 14.5, 14.8, 164.2, Yeah, it's great agreement here. Let's bring it up into the volt ranges. 5.17, 5.179, very nice. So 32.026, 32.07. And we've got 60 volts, 60.04, 60.15. I'm going to put some AC volts into it here. 121.8, 121.9, 121.8. So yeah, it's no problems there either. Let's now uh, measure some frequencies with it and then we'll try to do some current. All right, so it's supposed to be able to measure up to uh, 10 megahertz. So let's try that. Let's just put in... Um, one kilohertz to begin with. So I'm gonna put it one kilohertz at two volts peak to peak. Okay, so it's right on the money. Let's go up to 100 kilohertz. 100 kilohertz, no problem at all. Okay, now let's take it up to 10 megahertz. Try six volts peak to peak. No, it's not picking that up. All right, let's see where it comes back in. Eight megahertz, seven, six megahertz, five megahertz. 4 megahertz, 3 megahertz, so it's good to 3 megahertz. See 3.1, 3.2, Yeah, so 3.6 megahertz seems to be its limit with a 6 volt peak to peak square wave going into it. All right, let's, uh, let's bring it down to back down to 1 kilohertz again. I'm going to check, uh, see if it will do the duty cycle here. So we're at 50%, it's coming up at 49.9. And let's try 10. Okay, 90%. That's pretty good. Okay, well, well that checks out. Okay, let's see, we'll try to run some current. We'll run it through this first. And then we'll see if we we'll pick it up with the clamp meter. Okay, so we've got both the meters set up for DC amps. This one's the 60 amp range. Of course, this is auto ranging. And we've got uh, kind of a, a negative 320 milliamps showing here. So we want to get rid of that. We'll rel that out. Okay, that's close enough. So let's start off with about an, an amp. See what that looks like. Okay, 0 0.997, 0 0.99234. So it's reacting to the magnetic fields around here. Let's try three amps. 0.99, 2.86, okay, a little bit, it's a tiny little bit off, but again, this is a Hall effect sensor, this is DC current, so let's try six amps. Yeah, it's still off by about the same, 200 milliamps thereabouts. But for a quick and dirty measurement, that's perfect, that's just fine. All right, I need to find something to, to test out the 600 amp range, so I'm going to head out to the garage and see what I can find out there. Hopefully my truck is still there. Okay, well, it seems my uh, son borrowed my truck and my wife's off in the car. So I went and I tried the, the lawn tractor and it drew 46.6 amps and trying to start that up. It seems to be accurate enough. And uh, it's uh, very nicely built. Like the product material is, uh, is, is like it's ABS. 
In fact, let's have a look and see inside here. If they're if they're good, they would have put a material marking on the inside here. Yeah, it's ABS. So it's not a cheap plastic. This is a one tough meter. It feels very, very good in the hand. The clamp is not flimsy. It's fairly heavy duty. The switch rotates nicely. These buttons here are very nice. The display is very legible. It does have standard sized uh, spacing on here, which is was handy. Uh, the only thing I say is that uh, the, the frequency function on it didn't meet its specification. For 90% of the people that are going to use this, that's probably not a, an issue whatsoever. It's not going to be a problem. Who do I think is the real user of this thing? I think maybe an appliance repairman or just a, a handyman, a guy around the house who just needs to check to see if the odd circuit is live with the NCV, to see if a fuse is okay, to check a fuse, the resistance on a fuse, or to go through his car, check a bad connection, stuff like that. Or like I say, a, a, an appliance repairman. For class two and class one environments, I think this meter's it's great. And it's nicely made at a very fair price. I think right now, I thought I saw on their website, it was discounted down to something like $35 Canadian. Would that be about $25 US? And for that, it's a bargain for a DC clamp meter. I give this meter a thumbs up, it's nice. All the functions seem to work very well, except for the, the frequency and everything else I got no problem with at all. So yeah, I think they've got a winner here. All right, folks, I hope you got something out of this. Leave a comment. Is there anything I left out? Is there anything you'd like to see in up and coming meter reviews? Um, please let me know and, and I'll try to fit those things in. Between now and then, thanks a lot for coming out. We'll see you in the next video. If you're all interested in it, I'll leave a link to it or a couple of links to it down below. And uh, I'll put a, a discount code down there that if you go over to the V4 website, you can get a, an additional discount on the already extremely low price.